Hi, I'm Scott, and as a pro-level ninja warrior athlete, I've used over 50 massage guns to help me recover. Some are excellent, and some don't even have enough stall force to even do the job of massage. Today, I'm going to be testing over 12 brands ranging from only $30 all the way up to $400 to make sure you do not regret buying one. I will also have links to these massage guns, but also all the other massage guns I've ever used down in the description below. First in this massage gun showdown, I'm going to be measuring the stall force to make sure you can actually apply the enough pressure to massage your muscles properly. After that, I'm gonna be measuring the amplitude to see how far the heads actually travel when it hits you. Then I'm going to be measuring the noise levels to see if it's a massage gun you're gonna have to hide in your basement to use. And finally, I'll look at the overall usability of the massage guns. When massage guns don't have enough stall force, they just stall instantly. So I'm gonna be testing this by using my bathroom scale and slowly apply more weight until the motor actually stalls out. I'm gonna do this three times and then find the average. All these tests are gonna be ranged from the cheapest to the most expensive. The cheapest massage gun I'll be testing is this Chinese knockoff no-name brand I'll call X. This might be one of your standard massage guns you just see around for a good deal. At roughly only $30, we'll see if you get what you pay for. Coming in at only 1.28 pounds or 582 grams, it's definitely light in the hand. It doesn't come in with a case and the plastic heads do feel extremely cheap. With six speeds, the motor definitely sounds weak, so let's put it to the test. The stall force comes in only at 13 pounds. Now let's see how that compares to the more expensive models. Next, the Med Cursor Mini coming in at only $60. It weighs 1.78 pounds or 808 grams. It's heavier than X, but it's still on the smaller side and feels nice in the hand. The circular case can be annoying sitting on a shelf, but still does the job. With five speeds, it has plenty to dial in the speed you want. It says it has 10 millimeters of amplitude, which we'll be testing later. The stall force comes in at 27 pounds, taking the lead by over a factor of two already. Impressive. Bob and Brad are well-known physical therapists on YouTube, but do they make decent massage guns? Well, let's find out. The Q2 is the smallest massage gun they have, coming in at $60. It only weighs 1.01 pounds or 460 grams. That's the lightest so far. The wraparound grip and small form factor definitely feels great in the hand. Nice quality case with five attachments and five speeds. The stall force comes in at 23 pounds, well above X, but the med cursor stays in the lead. The Maybach 3 is one of the most popular massage guns on Amazon at $120. Coming in at 1.91 pounds or 867 grams, it's the heaviest one yet. It has a separate case for the seven attachments if you want to take them on the go. This bigger massage gun has five speeds and comes in at 26 pounds of stall force. Not quite enough to take the title from the med cursor. The Sport Near Elite D9 is also around $130 and comes in a medium to large form factor with the metal body. At 2.38 pounds or 1,080 grams, it definitely feels substantial in the hand. It feels like you could drop this thing many times and not have any damage thanks to the metal body. It has six speeds and some metal attachment options as well, which is nice. The stall force is very strong, measuring at 30 pounds, taking the lead from the med cursor. Very nice. I got a lot of sponsored social media ads about the Oyeet Nex. Let's see if this $130 mini massage gun lives up to the hype. It's smaller, but still not the lightest, at 1.14 pounds or 519 grams. The attachments are well above average in quality, but with no rubber handle on it, it sometimes almost feels slippery in the hand. There are four speeds, but unfortunately it was only able to hit 17 pounds of stall force. The bigger option from Bob and Brad is the X6 Pro. It comes in at $160, so let's see if it's worth the extra money. Weighing 2.13 pounds or 966 grams, it comes in just under the sport near. The unique solid metal flathead attachment screws in and allows you to heat it up in water or freeze it for treatments. The fork attachment, like its little brother, the Q2, has a notch in it, thus preventing the head from spinning while digging in. This is a nice touch I wish every massage gun had. The XX Pro comes with a quality case and five speeds to choose from. It was able to apply 24 pounds of stall force, which isn't much more than its little brother at 23 pounds. The Softer Spot S2 is $140 and available worldwide, which isn't always the case. It's a medium to large size massage gun weighing 2.18 pounds or 991 grams. This plastic build so far is only lighter than the Sport Near. The S2 has four standard heads, a decent size, and battery life. The 20 speed adjustments though are way over the top and some you don't even hear the motor changing. The stall force comes in at a respectable 23 pounds. One of the more expensive and well-known massage guns is the Hyperice Hypervolt at $250. The Hypervolt is the heaviest yet so far at 2.53 pounds or 1148 grams. You definitely feel the heft in your hand and the larger diameter handle. Sadly, it doesn't come with a case even with this higher price tag. With three speeds and five attachments, this unit was made popular by sponsored athletes. It also allows you to apply 27 pounds of pressure. That's pretty strong, but the Sport Near Elite D9 is still in the lead. 
The B37S is the top massage gun from Ekron at $264. The build quality is outstanding with six locking heads, a force meter, and up to eight hours on its Samsung batteries. It is on the larger side, weighing 2.2 pounds or exactly 1,000 grams. The B37S is also strong with 28 pounds of stall force taking second place to the Sportnir. The craft gun comes in around three to $400 if you can get it. I've mentioned on this channel before, their website always kind of gave me a scam type of feel, and as of recording this, the site doesn't even load, but I wanted to include it here because I knew it was strong and popular. It has four speeds and a triangle grip giving you those different hand positions. The craft gun is not small, coming in just under the Hypervolt at 2.48 pounds or 1124 grams. It does deliver though with a whopping 38 pounds of stall force taking the lead. The $400 Theragun Elite is the final one I'll be testing. It's not the most expensive one from Theragun with its big brother the Theragun Pro being $600. It's also a larger massage gun weighing 2.24 pounds or 1,018 grams. The Elite comes with a case and multiple attachments mostly in the shape of your thumb or kind of a ball with different densities. As possibly the most sponsored massage gun out there by athletes, it has a stall force of around 26 pounds, lower than the second cheapest one, the Med Cursor. If weight and portability is important to you, then the smaller option like the Bob and Brad Q2 might be one to keep your eye on. They are similar to traveling with laptops. As they get bigger, you start to notice the difference when you start carrying them around and using them. When it came to stall force, the craft gun really shined with the Sportnir taking second. In use, there's not much of a difference for the rest of the massage guns ranging from 23 to 28 pounds. It does start to feel kind of weak though with the OE and the knockoff X coming in under 20 pounds. Amplitude is how far this head travels back and forth. Now, if it's too short, it's gonna not really feel like a punch, it's gonna feel more like a vibrate. But if it gets too far out, then you're really gonna start to feel that punch. Like the other specs, I've learned to not trust the numbers. One company even told me I was measuring it wrong when I pointed out theirs was six millimeters shorter than advertised. For this test, I pull the shaft out as far as it can reach, and then I clear the caliper, and I push it in and measure the difference. The knockoff X came in at only 6.5 millimeters. The Med Cursor Mini is what I would kind of consider the average at 9.7 millimeters. The Bob and Brad Q2 has a stroke length of 7.42 millimeters in this tiny form factor. Mabach 3 was at 9.9 millimeters, taking the lead so far. Sportnir Elite D9 was also just under 10 millimeters with 9.58 millimeters. The Oyeet Next packs a 10.76 millimeters of amplitude in this tiny form factor, taking the lead. Impressive. Bob and Brad X6 Pro came in at 10.06 millimeters. The Softer Spot S2 comes in at 9.42 millimeters. The Hyper Ice Hypervolt came in just under the advertised 10 millimeters at 9.7 millimeters. The Ekron B37S was at 10.33 millimeters. Craft Gun makes the jump all the way up to 14.4 millimeters, taking the lead. Finally, the Theragun Elite comes in at 16.07 millimeters to have the biggest punch. The average is around 10 millimeters, which for perspective is the size of a pea. This is why I often stress stall force more than the amplitude. Some people love to feel that punch while others don't really care for it. That said, once you know the data, it's not probably worth stressing out over a few millimeters if you can dig in deep with that stall force. Once you've verified the massage gun is strong enough for you, you need to verify how loud you want it to be. Now this data always blows me away. For this test, I used the sound meter app on my phone and set it inches away from the massage gun as I turned it on. I put it on the lowest setting and the highest setting to see how much noise the motor produces. The knockoff X with its weak motor came in at 36 decibels and 45 decibels. The Med Cursor Mini came in at 40 on low and 63 on high with quite the range. The Bob and Brad Q2 takes the lead as the quietest at only 33 decibels on low and 41 on high. Almost as quiet as on high as the Med Cursor was on low. The Maybach 3 was a respectable 45 and 55 decibels. The Sportnir Elite D9 was 40 on low and up to 62 decibels on high. Similar to the Med Cursor, it had a big jump going from the lowest to the highest setting. OE Next comes in with the loudest yet at 56 on low and 63 decibels on high. Softer Spot S2 with almost similar numbers was 44 on low and 54 decibels on high. 
with the Bob and Brad X6 Pro is a respectable 45 and 57, very similar to the Maybach. To keep this trend going, the Hyperize Hypervolt came in at 44 and 59 decibels. The Ekron B37S is 52 on low and 64 decibels on high, making it the loudest on high so far. Craft Gun was similar to the OE Next, coming in at 58 on low and 62 decibels on high. And finally, the Theragun Elite started out at 59 decibels and went all the way up to 62 decibels. Looking at this graph, you can see the Theragun and Craft Gun didn't really jump much between the low and high settings like the other stronger massage guns Medcursor and Sportneer did. However, this graph is a bad representation because every 10 decibels is perceived as twice as loud. This graph shows you the low numbers scaled accordingly. That's why this data always blows me away. Now you can tell the Bob and Brad Q2 is four times quieter than the OE, Craft Gun, and Theragun. It's definitely one you could use almost in any setting without people noticing, while the others you should probably use in a room by yourself with the door closed. Remember, the more you can use the massage gun, the quicker you can recover. Speaking of which, let's talk about usability and what else matters when you're deciding. Portability can definitely be a key factor. Do you want one that fits in your coat pocket or one that basically comes with its own mini suitcase for everything? I usually just put mine in my backpack with a few extra heads, but it's definitely nice having a case for a landing spot. The different grips don't matter as much as I initially thought. I never found myself really switching my hand positions, and as long as you can easily apply pressure using two hands, then you're fine. For instance, the touchscreen on the softer spots can sometimes get bumped when you're pushing it with your second hand. Battery life is almost not a factor at all. These massage guns usually last multiple days easily, and the ones that are USB-C chargeable make it even easier to charge on the go. You might also come across an insane deal on some random massage gun, but many companies have sent me massage guns, and then a few months later, they're not even available on Amazon and stop replying to my emails. I don't want you stuck with a massage gun shaped brick to hold your door open. Which is the right massage gun for you? I personally prefer the portability, power, and value of the Bob and Brad Q2. It's always in my backpack, and since it's so quiet, I use it often, which means I don't get the knots I used to get. If you want a harder hitting massage gun, you might want the Theragun Elite. At $400, you're going to be paying for it. It's definitely hard to beat the Sportneer Elite D9 at $130. It's extremely powerful and quiet and has a great head selection, including some metal tips. I also appreciate the Ekron B37S with the locking heads, the force meter, and good battery life. This one definitely feels like a quality product. Comment below any other questions you have and which one is the right one for you. Till next time, see ya.